I've taken a handful of these so far, as well as other certification exams in other fields, and have not failed any yet, knock on wood. So I'm speaking from experience over many exams. Some tips are obvious, some might not be. First one is an obvious cliche one, but I see so many people that know it and still not actually follow it and struggle. So number one is get a good night's rest, eat a light snack, not a big one, and make sure you're hydrated before you go and test. The reason for this is you want your brain to be in peak performance. Something like being dehydrated can have a noticeable impact impact on neurotransmission since electrolytes are very important for transmitting nerve impulses. Since we're talking about IT certifications here, consider this like having a faulty power supply and wondering why your CPU is not working correctly. You want your brain to be well rested, fed some nutrients and hydrated just like you want your CPU and other hardware components to be fueled with clean energy at optimal temperatures and free from dust buildup. Here's the less obvious ones now. Number two, reread the questions. I'm not sure if you're like me, but but sometimes I rush through life trying to speedrun things and when you do that on an exam you just spent a few hundred dollars on and read the questions wrong, it won't be fun. Read the questions slowly, reread them to make sure you understand exactly what's being asked of you. The phrasing is very important on these CompTIA exams especially since there's subtle things that make the difference between the correct answer and an answer that seems correct if they were asking something slightly different. So I've personally caught myself almost submitting wrong answers because I read it wrong the first time and I know a lot of people that have gotten stuck on this as well, don't let the easy questions be the ones that you get wrong. Number three, if you're unsure about a question, flag it and come back to it later. In these CompTIA exams specifically, they have little flags next to the questions and they have a review at the end so you can re-review the things that you flagged. Flag any question you're unsure of, come back to it at the end and reread it. Also, there are some instances where questions near the end of the exam can remind you or give you extra context to answer the questions near the beginning that was confusing to you or will be easier the second time around. Number four, look out for things like best, first, next, or not. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Mike Myers. He's well known in the industry and he likes to drill this into people's heads. This kind of goes with the rereading questions, but definitely be on the lookout for these specific keywords because you could face a four choice question. Most of them are multiple choice, by the way. And the question seems to have three correct answers, but the wording actually says which of these is not the correct answer, which if you miss that small word could get you destroyed in an otherwise easy question. Number five, every so often they will have a multiple selection one, which is not a multiple choice choice, the multiple selection questions have multiple correct answers, so if it seems like there may be more than one correct answer, it may actually be correct that there's more than one correct answer. One more thing I want to mention similar to this is that in the beginning, they may have performance-based questions where they show diagrams and have you fill things in. This throws a lot of people off at first, and if you ask people that have taken it, probably about one-third of them just freeze up because it wasn't what they were expecting. Really though, there's not that many of these, and you can just come back to these later, which goes with tip number three. Some of these get easier after the rest of the exam. So number six seems obvious at first take practice exams, but I actually think that you should take practice exams before taking courses or study guides. This is very counterintuitive for most people. This is a huge one I don't see people talking about, and this is because our brain works in a very strange way. If you're reading or watching a course, your brain may just skim through it unmotivated to actually absorb the things that it's reading or watching, and you don't actually really fully absorb it because you aren't compelled or driven to retain it. When you take practice exams before you study or learn and intentionally fail, it will trigger an emotional response of pain. Our brain is wired so that we seek out ways to prevent emotional pain like failure. So when we take exams and fail, it will trigger the brain to switch gears and go into a problem solving and critical thinking mindset, specifically seeking out the tools needed to prevent those feelings of failure in the future. So for example, if you take a practice exam and get every single question regarding DHCP servers completely wrong, when you go through the study materials afterwards, your brain will say, hold up, I need to know this because I got this wrong before and it was a painful experience and I want to prevent that from happening again. In my experience, it's actually a more effective way of studying. There's a lot of tricks you can utilize to get more out of your brain after you understand the way it works biologically. It's really fascinating, but that's a video for a different time. Number seven, actually there's more.
course, I'll give you a bonus one, but number seven is to understand everything that may be covered in the exam, find your five biggest weak points, and focus extra time on learning and improving those specific areas. For myself personally, I have a background in comp sci and manufacturing, so hardware, printers, coding, problem solving, all of that is easy, but I knew I needed to put more time into memorizing port numbers, some network configuration standards, and some Linux command line prompts that I don't use very often. So I went through and I re-reviewed these areas before the exams to make sure I was confident in my knowledge in them, and I also made some other videos on this channel to hopefully help you understand these things a little bit easier than I did when I first learned them. I hate that I have to say this, but a little bonus tip is to make sure you're studying the right material. There is a handful of courses on Udemy and YouTube that just re-upload three, four, five, six-year-old content even longer from previous exams when the content is not current or correct, and they just label them as the new exams when they're not actually the new exams, and this is dangerous. There's also a few well-known sources that mix up their content. I've caught some people mixing up their CCNP material with A+, or Net+, coursework. Make sure whoever you learn from is teaching you the correct material for the current exam that you're going to be taking. You can do a great job at studying, but if you study the wrong material, you're kind of SOL. So I hope this video was helpful, and I will see you as always in the next one.